So I'm now joined by David Dunn from Tornos. We're going to be talking about two machines that we're going to be on show at the event. David, let's start with the Swiss Nano 7. Could you give us a quick overview of that machine? Yeah, sure, Paul. Um, the Swiss Nano 7, as you say, we we're going to show at Mac 2020. Um, the machine was a development on from our Swiss Nano 4 machine um, and really driven by the marketplace, wanting uh, the same capability as the Nano 4. Um, but with a, a larger bar diameter and uh, larger overall length. I mean, let, when you look at the Swiss Nano machine, it's a very compact machine, very unique in its look. Um, but maybe you could give our viewers, for those that haven't seen the Nano at all, uh, the capabilities of it, you know, the amount of tools in there, uh, what, it, what it's actually made to make. Yeah, I mean, the, the machine is a, is a, a six, has six linear axes, so we have... Um, X, Y, and Z in the main and X, Y, and Z in the counter. Um, we have a lot of capability with regards to driven tool, more so on the Nano 7 than on the Nano 4. Um, and it's really targeting initially at the micromechanics market, but um, as we saw with the Swiss Nano 4, um, it's automotive, um, electronics, medical, and with the Nano 7, more dental as well. So, so going up to that seven mil, that uh, what we're suggesting here is that opens you up to m many more markets, does it? More types of applications. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And and when you, when you look at these machines as well, David, I mean they are they are quite small. They're nimble. They're uh, they're, they're pretty agile as well. Easy to access and load. But do they lack at all in their in in their power, or is really that not a question for these machines? It's more about those very small, intricate components that need. Yeah, complex, complex machining quickly. Yeah, well, with the with the Nano Seven, um, we really, um, as you say, it's a small small machine. Um, it's a symmetrical casting, so we have a, a, a big development of the casting structure, which gives us a lot of stability and rigidity. Um, that enables us to um, machine to high tolerances, high surface finishes, um, improvement of tool life through uh, lack of vibration. Um, and generally uh, just gives a, a more rounded, capable product. Now, it's a complete Tornos product as well, isn't it? I mean, everything's kind of integrated, the, 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 the bar feeding solution, it's all kind of one unit. Would that be right as well? Yeah, well, I mean, with the bar feeder, we have various options that we can, we can provide with that, um, from the Gatling gun type arrangement to a more conventional style bar feeder. Um, but like with, with a lot of the products now, what we're trying to do is incorporate those ancillary items within the footprint of the machine. So it makes it a smaller, uh, more compact installation rather than taking up a lot of floor space that is, is dead and, and not productive. And I think that's a big point, having been to Moutier, looking at the machines, you, you've got plenty of customers that have not just got one of these, but they've got, you know, six, seven, eight of these machines that are, that are accommodating a very, very small footprint, haven't you? Mm. Yes, that's right. Yeah. I mean, you can get up to 10 machines in a, an 80 square meter footprint, you know, so there's a lot of production capability coming out of that um, from that floor, floor space. And tell me, what were you actually going to be demonstrating on the machine at Mac? What were you going to be making? What sort of example were you going to be showing people that the machine's capable of doing? And for, for Mac, we were going to be uh, showing an electronic connector, actually, or a contact, um, female contact. So with the machine, we can have various different uh, combinations of driven tools from um, you know, uh, slotting attachments, mini attachments, thread whirling, polygon turning, um, high frequency spindles, that type of thing. So we were really going to be demonstrating the machine in a connector type setup with driven tool capability in the main and counter operations. So the 826, eight spindles, 26 mil bar capacity. Um, what's, what's new about this particular model, David? Um, well, I mean, it, it's based on the, um, the multi-Swiss um, 16 six that we uh, we launched uh, previously um it's uh, the 826 8 spindle so it gives a lot more flexibility for subcontract shops as an example um we can also have a a, a larger number of uh, y-axis capability on the machine as well so again it gives you a lot of flexibility um overall on the machine 
Now, when you look at this sort of technology, and it's true to say we'll put it, up, we'll put an overlay over the top of the screen. You look at it and you think, my God, there's eight spindles moving there. Um, you know, have I got the volumes of work for it? How am I going to set it? How am I mm. going to program it? How am I going to balance it all out? These must be quite common objections that you would face to this sort of technology. Uh, and when you do, what what are the answers to some of those questions, David? Because I know there's some quite compelling sales reasons why these machines uh, are very suitable to subcontract machine shops. Mm. Yeah, well, I think historically, you know, multi-spindles have always been seen as a high volume, high production type product. Um, and with the older style machines, yes, that was true, you know, longer to set, you could be looking at one or two day setups and equally expensive to set because it's form tools, special tooling with lead times, etc., that, that would impact on, uh, on your cost and, uh, and reaction time. With something like the multi-Swiss, we're using standard ISO tooling. Um, it's fully programmable. It, you know, we've got it on an eight spindle machine where we're really looking at programming um, eight, two or three axis machines. You know, so it's, it's very simple. Um, easy to program machine, easy to set as well. Everything with regard setting is is done to make it as quick um, and as straightforward as possible. And equally, having a single spindle, you know, Swiss type setter in mind. So it's not a a black art of multi spindle. It's a it's it's a transition from Swiss type to to multi spindle. I mean, that's the thing. When you look at eight spindles, you th you would be thinking to yourself, gee whiz, I need a lot of volume to be able to um, overcome the amount of time it takes to set. But if that time is reduced, then again, mm. you can then reduce the volumes that you're putting through the machine as well, but still make those parts far quicker. Now, you have some um, quite uh, sort of unique areas of the machine that we could touch on if we had more time. So I'll, I'll pick on a few. The hydrostatic spindles, can you tell us about those and what the advantages are of, of those on these machines? Yeah, sure. With, I mean, hydrostatic um, spindles, as you say, um, it's a unique um, technology to Tornos on the multi-Swiss. And really that enables us to run without mechanical bearing on the front of the spindle. So we reduce vibration um, and noise coming through from a mechanical bearing. Uh, and that in itself makes the spindle more stable. Um, achievable surface finishes are much higher. Um, equally tolerances are, are much higher as well. Well, you know, and, and, and it's a, a quieter spindle to run as well, you know, so it's a, a very good technology um, when you think you've got eight of those spindles running at potentially 8,000 RPM, um, depending on the process. And, and what were you going to be showing on this particular machine? What were you going to be, uh, were you going to be cutting any, any particular part at the event? No, this, this, this time we weren't actually, you know, because of the physical size of the machine, to install um, a full machine um, takes up a lot of floor space. So. Tornos as a whole now have uh, decided to um, provide an exhibition machine. So it's the front end of the machine that we can we can obviously show to customer and um, explain the technology in more detail. And I think one of the great things about Tornos, David, is uh, having been working with you guys for quite some time, you've got some fabulous marketing material. So if, if people want to actually see these machines in action doing various types of applications, because there are vast, vast options of the types of parts you can machine, you can provide, mm -hmm. you can provide them with that anyway, can't you, outside of, uh, outside of this piece anyway? Absolutely, yeah. And, and you know, we have a fantastic sales tool, Go Tornos, which... Um, uh, we can use interactively so we can demonstrate and uh, explain the machines in great detail to customers you know in, in the current climate whether that's face to face it's not feasible you can do it via a, a remote link. Uh, final point from me connectivity was there going to be any discussions or any points for you uh, at Mac about how you're how you're connecting your machines up like for example your Tysis software and things like that were you going to be talking about those? Yeah I mean we, we had planned to have a, um, a link to uh, to a machine um, that we would be able to show on our uh, our, our stand, um, so we will be able to give a, a, a real time representation of the uh, of the machine in production, um, any alarms that were displayed and, and that type of thing. So it would have been a, a very good tool to show the customers the connectivity side of Tysis, and obviously we would be able to demonstrate Tysis programming um, and manipulation uh, on the stand live anyway. 
Okay, uh, thank you very much for joining us, David, today on the show. Um, Tornos, uh, Tornos Machines, I've been to Moutier quite a few times and it really is um, a, a really tremendous location in the world to go to, but also to their factory to see uh, the machines being made and in operation, but not just there. Of course, they're based here in the UK in Colville, where they do have plant there that you can see uh, and operate.